nothing beats the roar of this engine when it comes to life thank you ah perfect i love the warmth of the ginger in this ola shunti coffee this is vienna yes, sir and this yes, is the mango oil pandu swami is one of the most famous chitira cuisine brand it's a 75 year old brand and we requested the owners that uh, if you, they would like to tie up with us so and they cook sir here yes these are the chitira the prawn fry veg cutlet veg cutlet chitira chitira also pachi prawn you can taste the spice the whole the idea is that is spicy cuisine really tain to more and more beer Hi folks, hope you're doing well. It's a Sunday morning, and I have decided to step out for a short ride. And what's interesting beyond the ride is that I've got my GoPro hooked on to my helmet after a very long time. It can only mean one thing: that I'm going to be shooting a bit of footage as I ride along. It's not that I was not riding at all. Uh, I was doing these short rides, but I was using an open face helmet, and there was no provision for me to actually get my GoPro on it. But today we have it. and so let's get on the ride there's the beast in all its glory and if you notice right next to it is an empty parking spot well the sad news is that uh, i've let go of my himalayan was not riding it enough and uh, i just felt sorry that even after 4 years i'd only done about 5 or 6000 kilometers on the himalayan and therefore very recently i took the decision to let go of the himalayan and uh, i got a pretty good offer on it from the dealer of the royal enfield showroom uh, who knew that i took really good care of my bikes he had a specific purpose in mind for that motorcycle because that was a bs4 engine and uh, he felt that that particular engine had a little more power for the kind of things that he was planning to do with it he was planning to modify it a bit and so he gave me a good offer when i reached out to him saying that i'm contemplating selling the motorcycle and that was it So now it's only the fat boy that I have and uh, let's ride it. Nothing beats the roar of this engine when it comes to life. Absolutely nothing. It's about 10:50 in the morning. If you're wondering why I'm, I've set out so late for this ride is because I was working till very late last night. I don't know if you've caught the first in a new series of a day in the life sort of vlogs that I've just uh, put up on this channel, and uh, I'm trying to keep it, do it in a manner where I edit it soon after I shoot it. and that kind of helps keep the freshness and the relevance alive so it's up to late in the night early morning actually and uh, decided that i definitely needed my 6 hours of shot eye before i stepped out so anyways this is going to be a short ride uh, 
the state of nama bengaluru currently is such that uh, there are many roads that are dug up there are many roads that are dug up at this point in time metro construction happening in a lot of places too riding the motorcycle especially if you are a little late in the morning is not very pleasurable especially if you are stuck in jams and crawling along as you know this motorcycle heats up a fair bit so today i have decided just to kind of ride around my neighborhood जेस कोरमंगला एच एस आर एंड आई ऑल्सो वॉन्ट सी थिंग्स थ्रू दी गोप्रो आई बीन मिसिंग दैट व्यू एंड आई एम श्योर सम ऑफ यू टू Valentine's day is over but the roses keep coming Thank you the other thing that was happening with the Himalayan was because I was not riding it at all uh, there were situations where when I wanted to ride the battery was discharged and I didn't have the provision in my basement to actually plug it and uh, so if that happened then I got the battery charged and again I wouldn't find some time to ride it and so this was like a cycle that happened all the time so finally i had to take a tough decision cuz really love the motorcycle for what it could do i said uh, let's give it up for now and then uh, who knows in the future family out for a sunday ride i suppose the traffic build up is huge these days oh huh? everywhere and especially on a weekend even these little short stretches where you find an open road and uh, you can open the engine up a bit even those few seconds makes you feel so good of course safely that is huh? i think those of you who were used to following my motor vlogs know for me it's safety first and then everything else I can't wait to get back home and uh, check out the view through the GoPro. It's been ages. The one thing about the fat boy is wherever you go most people look at it and they want to look at it again that's the presence that this beast commands One of my favorite lines about the fat boy is the only motorcycle that can move you standing still lovely to see people out getting their morning tiffin coffee Perhaps I should get some coffee too. Living life every day, late at night, not okay. Just riding around without really any agenda today. Looking in the mirror. 
nearer So foggy, but I've never seen clearer I don't really think anyone can save me And honestly, I'm not really sure I want saving I like to be my own worst enemy There's no risk if you don't try at anything So I'ma just get by in everything See you in the next life, hope to be a better me I don't think that my head's on straight Gotta flip it and grip it and go and get an x-ray What's wrong with me? I just feel way Pushing on my chest and it's squeeze till I suffocate Even in a short neighborhood ride, you're spending more time in signals today I also get reminded of places that I get recommendations from so these rides also help me with that when I do these short city rides If nothing else is uh, the pain of having to uh, waddle through traffic waddle through these very slow paces motivates you that the next time you get on the motorcycle try and get out a little early the challenge though is it becomes very difficult for me to do this on any other day other than a weekend because in a weekday too there's plenty of traffic that builds up early in the morning and where I live always a fair amount of traffic only weekends on Sundays especially you find that to be lesser must try and find a way of making this work when I get up really early on a Sunday and uh, do the ride and still do other things that I need to do. I'm burning here, burning here with all this traffic and all these stops at the signals. Definitely need a stop. I think this should do. Number filter coffee. Hello. How are you? Fine, sir. What's your name? Madhushri, sir. Madhushri, Namaskar. How are you? I'm a sir. Hello. Pinto, sir. What about you? Hari. Hari. Suku coffee, sir. Suku coffee. Milk without milk. Nange, without milk. Without milk. Try ginger. Nange, adu kodi ondu. Uh, baki like in Super, sir. Ginger in this Onashunti coffee. I already had a cup of coffee at home, so I didn't want to load myself with more caffeine. And therefore, this Onashunti coffee or the dry ginger coffee almost like a kashayam. I'm a big fan of establishments like these that are doing their best to promote traditional culture, traditional cuisine, traditional practices. There have a couple of outlets in uh, Bengaluru, one in Jayanagar and this one in HSR layout. And if you haven't checked it out yet, do check it out. I also have a video on Food Lovers TV on it. So they serve a variety of coffees, Kumbakonam, Karnataka coffees, Maharaja coffee. They also do a cold coffee, things like the Chukku coffee, the Onashunti, the dry ginger coffee. And they serve it with a bunch of these interesting traditional bakery tidbits. Madhur Vade, do you want to buy it? Yes, yes. Sold out? Sunday already? From Madhur Tiffany's. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. If you crave a Madhur Vade and uh, with some coffee and you come here on a Friday, Saturday, Sunday, you will also find the Madhur Vade in case they are not sold out already. They get limited numbers because they drive it from Madhur directly. It's difficult to do something like this, you know, as opposed to let's say just pull coffee out of a machine. But here, they've got a bunch of different blends. Uh, you need some skill sets also to pour the coffee. They do a very interesting pour when it comes to the Maharaja coffee. So I'm happy to see things like these because that shows that uh, there is still, our traditions will continue. And I think that's very important. For me, if, in a lot of places that I cover, I try to look for places which are doing their best to foster tradition, to nurture tradition, to continue that. I'm a big fan of that. Oh, 
latte with some of the warmth of the ginger feels great as it percolates down your throat. The fat boy is out basking in the sun. I think this is going to be a really hot summer from the looks of it. Thank you. Well, that was a good ride this morning. Uh, short but sweet and uh, good enough to make me feel good and also get me thinking that I should ride more. I'm on my way now to a friend's place, brewery here in Whitefield called Fox in the Field. And so they won some awards recently, so they're doing a party. To be honest, I don't attend too many parties, I don't attend too many do's. But I feel that somewhere, because of the fact that I'm busy doing all that I do, I'm perhaps also losing touch with some of the friends, some of the people that I used to know before Gourmet on the Road etc. happened. And uh, I don't think that's very good. So this evening I've set out, although it's a Sunday evening, I've set out to uh, Whitefield, to Fox in the Fields. It's, a, it's close to an hour and a half from home. But I said, let me go there, uh, get there a little early, spend some time and uh, you know catch up with a few friends and acquaintances from uh, times gone by. I plan to make an early night of it so I can get back home at a respectable hour and uh, brace myself for the week ahead. Thankfully because it's a Sunday evening traffic isn't uh, too bad. My first time here, I've never visited here before. So my group brewery. My god, this looks like a rather big place. Didn't realize it. Fox in the Dead enter the Fox Brewery level, Ponuswami. So they have Ponuswami from Chennai here. So I'm with my friend Mr. Abhay Kevadkar, who's the owner of Fox in the Field. This is like a massive place, huh? Yes, uh, we have almost 20,000 square foot now. 20,000 square feet, my goodness. And out of that 8,000 square foot is the terrace. Wow. Okay. For, to give an example, we do the chicken ghee roast on Vigri Toast. Other thing we do is the uh, naan pots. Uh. Then you add the batter is the uh, naan flour. And then the stuffing inside can be chicken, mutton, paneer or mushrooms. Fantastic. And then we put it into the oven. Uh. Apart from that, we also do the Ponnu Swami Chetty Nat Cuisine. Uh. Uh, which is going to be served today. The Chetty Ponnu Swami uh, chefs, they work in our kitchen. So that the authenticity of the cuisine is kept. So apart from that, we do Chiro's uh, Italian pizza, Spanish cuisine. Uh, we have uh, uh, normal uh, European cuisine uh. and uh, some dishes from the Indian cuisine too. Uh. So there is a good variety uh, of uh, cuisine available to suit everybody's palate. Wonderful. We started this place in uh, November 19th. And we ran it for four months and unfortunately uh, we got into COVID. COVID. And then uh, we had to stop, we restarted, second time we had to stop. But finally from uh, November 2021, we are running this continuously. So I know Abhay, of course Abhay today is running a microbrewery, is that what you call this? So yes, it's a massive beer. Yes. But I know him as one of India's most eminent winemakers from a time when there was not too much wine available in this country. Yes. If you've heard of a grower's Larissa, well he's the man who is responsible for that. Absolutely. Uh, Along with uh, the people at Growers. Yes. He was a winemaker and Growers Lazar. I'm still a winemaker. You're still a winemaker. I make my wines in France. Ah, that's and then right. Then back to India. The early dark. Yes. So, one of the things that I've been dabbling with, the thought that I've been dabbling with is that I should return here someday and taste some of the Poduswami food with some of your craft brews. 
I think that should be interesting. Let me know if you want me to do that. Return here and taste some of that. Yes, welcome. And then come back to check that out. Do come back soon. Yeah. normally do very well okay uh, belgian wheat and uh, german wheat but then we have a very special beer vnil which has got um, more hops than uh, normal okay yeah, more flavorful and um, the ibu the um, uh, international bitter units are about 35 in this beer so this is the beer which does extremely well and uh, very few macro breweries do this style of beer this is vnil and this is the mango oil oh mango ale uh, mango ale is like this is a season being mango you know uh, uh, just starting uh, so we just want to add something which is a bit innovative you know just to create some buzz uh, and then also the uh, mango ale you know that particular flavors uh, people really like it the aroma the seasonal right? flavors from a mango and it will be very subtle but it will be still unmistakable because this fruit should not overbear the flavors coming from the beer and the malt and the hops. So again, there is the tropical pungent ripeness of the mango that is immediately evident on the nose. Yes. And then on the mouth, you have a slight malty sort of a... Yes, that's coming mm. from the... You know, we use uh, imported malts ah, okay. and the hops. We use the European uh, malts and hops. Very fruity, very refreshing. Yes. I would imagine the, yeah, this yeah. would be very popular in the peak summer. We just uh, brewed it uh, for the first time. And what we are tasting is among the one of the first tastes. Ah, taste. lovely. I can definitely taste that uh, ripe, pungent hit of the mango. That tropical ripeness, that tropical freshness of the mango. The Vienna Ale. Yes, the Vienna Ale, as I said, uh, that um, uh, it, it has got the hops, which is a little bit uh, higher level than normal. Ah. And then uh, you have a lot of flavors coming from the hops and the international bitterness units are a bit high here, Correct. it's about 35. I can definitely taste that bitter edge. But also yeah. what's interesting here is that this particular beer is also more wholesome in the manner it sits on your tongue, right? Yes, it has got more structure. Uh, it stays longer on your palate because of this IBU being higher. Oh, okay. So that's the international bitter units. Yes. And this is Normally, you have bitterness units between 15 and 20. There are certain styles which you can do only with a craft beer, where you can go to as high as 55 or even 65. Ah, okay. But we go maximum up to 45. I think it's also what the audience will exactly. like to... Because a lot of customers or consumers are still not ready uh, for uh, bitterness unit of about 45 years. Ah, uh, so. okay. We have a lot of presence of Andhra cuisine uh, restaurants in Bangalore. Uh, but when you talk about the Chettina cuisine, Probably we are just one or two. Correct. And Pondu Swami is one of the most famous Chettina cuisine brand. It's a 75 year old brand. And we requested the owners that uh, if you, they would like to tie up with us. So and they cooks are here? Yes. The cooks come from uh, Chettina, the main restaurant from Chennai. The whole the kitchen staff comes from Chennai. And you have the full menu of Pondu Swami? I would say they have 80% of the 80 menu. 80% of the menu. So it's a big part of what you do here. Yes, absolutely. These are the titina the prawn fry. And all the recipes and all the important parts of the spices, they actually come from the Chennai. That masala is punchy. No? The roasted spices. The coriander garnish, some of the curry leaves that you are tasting. Veg cutlet. Veg cutlet. Mm. Also a punchy prawn, you can taste the spice. The whole idea is that the spicy cuisine really tend to more and more beer. Ah. So the chachina cuisine and beer go well together. It's a great pairing, as we call it in a wine parlay. Yes. So you got to drink more and more beer when you are having a spicy cuisine like this. They always uh, do a bit uh, weight because of the freshly grounded spices oh. are the integral part of the cuisine. So when they are a bit weight, you actually get to taste those freshly roasted and pounded uh, spices. So all the spices come from uh, Ponu Swami or? The spices come from Ponu Swami kitchen. In the masalas? Yes. So that they have that with the consistency of the product uh, and you have that original taste. To me I think that prawn is a winner. Huh? 
it's spicy it's a sort that i'm sure has me sweating at the back of my head <laughs> but then nothing that a chilled beer a chilled glass of beer won't wash away mm. and other roasted flavors and masala freshly pounded and roasted spices the flavor they give you and uh, the taste they leave on your palate mm. it is quite unique it's a bit spicy yeah but that the style that the cuisine lovely cutlet Kind of the balance is good. Oh, lovely! I love the crunch that I'm biting it, and also slivers of green chili there. Uh, this is like a potato and some peas and things like that. Mm. It's a good balance for the spicy cuisine. Yeah. And what's nice is the texture in that cutlet. You know, so it's not just the soft mashiness of the potato, but it's also that crunch. You know, I think there's some peas or some corn in that. I don't know. There's something which has got a nice textural bite. There's some chili in that as well. There is some um, uh, green chili. Green chili in that. And what I love about this is the crunchiness of the crust. Yeah. That's pretty unique. Yeah. And the softness, um, you know, of the vegetables and the masala inside. Yeah. Very nice. Just like, uh, to be honest, I was I was excited to taste the prawn. The cutlet came. I said, "What will the cutlet be all about?" But it's quite interesting. And also, they have a bit of, I think, red chili powder that's sprinkled on top, along with some chaat masala as well. And I think that's kind of lending its dimension in terms of the flavor. Well, just got away from the evening soiree at Fox in the Field. Interesting place. Uh, nice to taste some of the the beers were interesting. Of course, I tasted a little bit of a couple of them, the mango and also the Vienna ale. But I think what was more interesting was the food from Ponu Swami. I quite liked the prawn chutney art that they did and also the the cutlets. I thought the cutlets were the most interesting dish that I tasted there today. So, anyways, that was my Sunday. If you did enjoy the video, give it a thumbs up. share it with your friends and family if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet do consider subscribing and i'll see you on the next one bye